So in this clip we're going to look how to use Excel to calculate probabilities from the exponential distribution. The exponential distribution has one parameter. On the Eclair web page we uh, called it theta and that was approximately equal to the uh, expected value of our random variable. Let's start with a value of 1 here. Very often however you will find that the one parameter of the distribution is called lambda, it's defined as lambda, and usually it is defined as 1 over our theta. Okay, so that would be equivalent to 1 over the expected value. Now it turns out that Excel will expect this type of parameter config configuration. Now you can see the way how I defined this as a formula. If theta, for instance, is 5, then lambda will be 0 0.2, 1 over 5. But we shall start with a value of 1. Now, we know that the exponential distribution lives on the positive real line, so let's just give ourselves a few values to look at, and we will want to calculate the probability density function and the cumulative distribution function. And to calculate these densities and the uh, probabilities, fortunately we can use an Excel function. So we go to the function option, we'll look for statistical, and here we need to look for exponential, and here it is. So three arguments we need. Firstly, at what value do we want to calculate? Let's start with the PDF, the probability density. Let's use that one, A7. What is the core the parameter value? Now it asks for lambda, so that's this value here. And we shall actually fix it because as we copy it down, we want to always refer to that lambda. And then the question is do we want cumulative or the probability density function? Let's start with probability density. That means we need a false here. We click OK, so we get a certain value here, and we can copy that down. So that now calculates the density at a different value of x here for x equals 4. If we want the cumulative density we can use exactly the same formula so I copy that formula and the only difference is that instead of false we now want the cumulative and we need to say true and again we can just copy that. Now let's just give ourselves a few more values to look at so I'll track this down all the way up to 18 and you can see that eventually the CDF converges to 1 as it should uh, and in this particular case the PDF basically goes down to 0. So let's look at these two guys graphically. We'll use a little line graph. Uh, we'll make this a bit flatter and give it a title. This is the PDF. And let's take away this guy and we'll put this here. And we shall also look at the CDF. We'll produce a new line graph for this. Just make sure we can look at both of them. Give it the title CDF. Let's delete this one. So here you can see the PDF for an exponential distribution with <coughs> theta equal to 1 or lambda equal to 1 and here you can see the CDF. You can see the CDF of course converges to 1. Now the CDF actually starts pretty uh, pretty high up. That is because I start with a value of x equals to 1. There will be a lot of probability as you can see basically more up or 63 percent of the probability for values of x smaller than 1. So I should really, I could have started this much finer. In fact, why don't we do this? We'll do 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and we copy this down. Okay, so what we now get is values from 1, 0 0.1 to 1.8, and now you can see that it starts uh, much lower down, and here we have the PDF, and we could of course continue this much much further on uh, it didn't really let's see how does it work yeah I will 
works better. So we go up to 21.1 and we now want to change the range of the figure to 217. So the easiest way to do that is to right mouse click on the graph, uh, select data and you can see here it goes from B7 to B214 so now we want to go to B217 and you can see the new PDF. We do the same here, right mouse click, select data which has changed the 24 to 217 and here we have our PDF and CDF for theta equals 1 and that means lambda equals to 1. Now you can easily see what happens if you change the parameter. We said theta was about the expected value of the random variable. Let's uh, take this up to 5. And then we see how the PDF and the CDF change. Now these numbers are not equal to x. Uh, they're just counting. Actually perhaps that's the last thing we change. We select data. We can uh, horizontal axis labels, that's what we want to change. Uh, so we click on this and we just select our x axis. It went down to 21.1, say OK and OK. And now we can see on the PDF how our x has changed to the actual x values. And you could do the same with the CDF, but I leave that up to you.